Hurts in just one reaction this is why this fish belong in a horror movie more than sharks by channel casual geographic yes uh we're back at the horror show with the casual geographic uh this is the latest video it was just posted oh just like an hour ago well that's something right uh yeah uh, horror show. basically whenever casual geographic upload is like is it gonna be some wholesome video which he's increased in recent time oh, also look at that i went to this zoo this is good things here and there but his ammo mostly is just like horror movies right uh which i love right because I was never afraid of chimpanzees. Now I'm, I think I'm more afraid of chimpanzees than anything else. Just how their social structure works, right? So I guess also like uh, orcas. I didn't know that. I, I, if you told me like which is the fish you're gonna fear the most, I would say like oh I guess, you know like those uh, jaw style shark, great white shark, whatever, right? Something like that. Oh no no no, these are orcas. Orcas are the one you're supposed to fear because they're really fucked up, fucked up here, right? And they're really smart. So yeah, combination is just uh, obviously uh, the sh this is the most deadliest shark. I'm pretty sure it's the hammerhead one, right? It has like a you know like uh, insane vision, two hundred seventy degree vision and shit. So yeah, something like that. So th these are gonna be f uh, is is this piranhas, right? Piranhas have the rap, just like swarming, uh, like how uh, who, who was that like? River otters, right? River otters, yeah. The, the makes this, you know, sounds and gang up on something. When you see clips, like, what the fuck? So, piranhas are like that, right? I don't know. So, it's going to be interesting. Let's watch it. You know, the greatest trick Hollywood ever pulled was convincing the world that sharks are the only things to fear in the water. There be monsters. In the last video, we talked about how sharks might just be the most misunderstood creatures in nature, with a PR team that works about as hard as a whiteout's brain after six rounds of CTE. They've been done so dirty, they've actually overshadowed the other ichthyological insanity spawned from Satan's septic tank. These are seven fish that should honestly terrify you more than any shark. This isn't really to substitute one Top fear seven. for another, but I do think these fish can make a much more traumatizing, nightmare-inducing horror flick than Jaws. And it starts right here. Those eyes belong to a pair of Arapaimas, also known as a pure root. I saw that clip in one of the videos, like somebody was making a video like that. Pretty sure this is like, what is it, on TikTok or something? And I saw these like eyes coming out. I mean, that must be edited. No way that's real. And then like, wait a minute, there are animals whose eyes glow, right? Like dogs and shit, deers and things. What deers? Do their eyes close? I don't know. But at night, their eye glows because like double reflection thing, right? Whatever that eye thing is. I mean, like fish could have that, but why red? This is real. What the? F Look at if imagine like you go on fishing on like your fishing boat, small fishing boat, right? And this like this kind of thing like approaches you like that. Probably harmless, right? It's just their eyes, they, they glow like that. They're probably looking for food. But imagine that, imagine seeing this at like midnight at 1 a.m. or something. I would, I would, if it's a robot, I would roll the fuck out of that. Like, I've never rolled. Like, I, I would just like run past. If somebody sees in the distance, you would be like, this cartoon is woof. You've definitely seen them before. Does this video ring a bell? Knockout. It definitely rang his. It's one of the biggest freshwater middle fingers nature forgot to vault, usually growing to over six feet long and 200 something pounds. It's bad enough those are NBA point guard measurements, but the it's previous big. ones can get to 10 feet in length and weigh over 400 pounds. This Jurassic Roid guppy usually eats other fish to go with fruits and seeds, but also birds and allegedly even monkeys sitting on branches too close to water. And if you don't believe that, it's because you haven't seen them hunt. They're explosively quick and the aquatic black hole has been known to confuse feet for fish and violently pull people underwater. One zookeeper reportedly made the mistake of trying to retrieve a glove that had fallen into an arapaima pool and in a split second got his hand, wrist, and several fingers broken. There's also the fact that a refrigerator sized fish will yeet themselves out of water in self defense. And let's talk about that defense. The plus size bite chair is covered in heavily armored scales, not only tough enough to tank piranha attacks. Yeah, look at this shit. It's like, what is it? Dragon scale? Armor, yeah, dragon scale armor from Skyrim, right? There are two armors. One is the big one, dragon bone armor, and the second one, which kind of look cooler in a way, dragon scale armor. That's how it looks. There you go. Yeah, so in water, like it doesn't matter how much fish weighs because in water they're technically not weighing mo anything, right? That's what that's how, what it means basically, right? That's how they can swim. 
the biggest biggest um, you know what is the biggest mammoth biggest uh, animal ever right what is a blue whale shark right no blue whales not shark my mind is not right i know blue whales right the biggest animal ever and they weigh this ridiculous uh, size but not really they are inside the water so they don't weigh much if you put them outside the water yeah now they weigh much right so technically like they still have the mass is the same but when it comes to weight i mean in water you don't weigh right that's how they float so in the end of the day people are surprised when something doesn't weigh that much small fish can have really strong force like pulling force and things like that but it's mostly because how they can you know like swim how they are like really good at swimming right so they can generate force by pushing the water basically so weight doesn't mean much but the size and surface area yeah so if something just grabs your arm and just pulls you in if something is like larger in just size yeah it, it will have enough like surface area and force of the water to actually pull you in that's dangerous Attacks. locals historically used them as nail files they've also used their tongues as scrapers since these fish have teeth going out of a bony tongue that can be used to effectively crush struggling prey against the roof of their mouths you know nature got in this bag when it made a fish that could breathe air and the antichrist of the amazon has a modified swim bladder that was repurposed as lungs meaning this flex of a fish can survive 24 hours out of water on one hand that means they have to come up for air every 20 minutes or suffer the eternal shame of being a fish that finds a way to drown but it also works out for them because in low oxygen water where most fish become slow and sluggish, the air merchant menace can pretty much go on a killing streak. Now the question is, could an Arapaima pack up a person? While there's no indication they see us as a snack, there are old stories of high-strung assault guppies effectively drowning people, likely by knocking them unconscious and leaving them incapacitated underwater. Not him, he's fine. You can unclench guidelines, he's good. But one man that almost- If anything that's like half a size as human, probably can be dangerous to human it's just like thumb rule most wasn't was jeremy wade he probably needs no introduction but long story short he's a zoologist who hosted the show river monsters which ended but only because he caught every fish nature had to offer but he almost caught an early life retirement after a pissed off paima struck him square in the chest and nearly caused irreversible damage to his heart not only did this fish nearly have a singing suspect wasn't more than 90 pounds. Remember, the overachievers can press the scales at 400 or, you know, 180 kilograms worth of kill a man. So yeah, the Arapaim is a shack size air breathing. Okay, this meme about wasted and like GTA 5, when GTA 6 comes, like, will that replace all the GTA 5 meme? Because GTA 5 is the biggest thing ever. Literally the most sold game if you don't see Minecraft, basically. It's like Minecraft is like kind of cheating, let's be honest. Most people play Minecraft because they, even the weakest shit can play Minecraft. So GTA 5, heavy enough required game, being the second most sold game of all time. Imagine GTA 6. How much that's gonna sell? They, it will cross the servers of like all online purchases. PlayStation Network, like Xbox Networks and every shit, right? Just imagine the level of money they're gonna make. And imagine how good... Red Dead Redemption 3 is going to be because of this money surge. They can invest more in it. Armor-plated predatory vacuum, and strangely enough, it's not the fish I'm most scared of in the Amazon. But we'll get to that. The piranha actually isn't. If you remember from an earlier video, piranhas might be just as misunderstood as sharks. They're mostly just scavenging opportunists that our childhoods convinced us were way more of an issue. You cannot say the same for their cousins found in the Congo Basin of Central Africa. The Goliath tigerfish can grow nearly 5 feet long, over 100 pounds, and they're what people were to- What the fuck, man? That is not- look at, look at that guy's face and I'm guessing that's like a- 5'11 or something you know he's like caucasian so 5'11 average size so he must be 5'11 or 6 foot or something and now look at that fist that's not okay man uh, i'm not gonna lie that's just uh, this is nightmare shit rode nearly five feet long over a hundred pounds and they're what people were told piranhas are times 10. they're in the same order but where piranhas are primarily a swimming cleanup crew tigerfish actively hunt for their bodies and you'll find out nature built this prehistoric problem to do exactly that they have sharp dagger-like teeth that many swear are comparable to that of a great white although i personally see them as more conical like a crocodile which is a coincidence since the saltwater variety are their only natural predators. But of course, the swimming expletive has also been known to murk smaller crocs. 
They have eerily strong eyesight to track prey, special organs to detect the vibrations they make underwater, and they're strong enough to brute force their way through the turbulent waters of their hunting grounds. They're considered one of the toughest freshwater fish time left behind, and tigerfish are even on record snatching birds out of the air. Not just birds, but swallows, some of the fastest and most maneuverable out there. Scientists studying them watched as 300 birds got permanently grounded by tigerfish. All of them, all of them. So these fish are so accurate. <laughs> they saw all the type of prey and they're like the fastest fish. That's what I'm going to aim at. Oh, look at that go and he's going to come in and just like snatch it. That's some next level shit. In just over two weeks, they're so feared that in many places they're only known by one name. Benga, meaning the dangerous fish. There's even a story of a young girl wearing a belt made out of bottle caps in order to ward off evil spirits. Ironically, it did the exact opposite and attracted a tiger fish who apparently confused the bottle caps for fish scales and nearly bisected the girl. Allegedly. It's an extremely fast, explosive vice grip with almost zero prey prejudice. And I'd still rather take a bite from them than the fish up next. And that's cause next is the Kandiru. And a lot of y'all already know what road we're going down. The Kandiru is a tiny parasite in the Amazon, also nicknamed the vampire fish for their habit of invading the gills of larger fish and scraping the insides. No, no, no oh my god, that was a... Uh, I don't know, I just don't like this. Uh, is it some form of OCD or what? I don't know. But uh, what the fuck, what kind of bug is that? God damn. Yeah, so what I was saying, yeah, the, you know, I don't know because I have OCD or something, but this parasite thing is just panicking me. There's a video of like a shellfish or whatever, and there was a parasite inside moving, you can see it like, Ugh, right? I don't know if the, it's movie Hollywood that they just show us, like, is, or is it just like one of those things that just like creeps you out, right? Even if you don't have any phobia, you, th you think about like some kind of parasite or something, your skin starts to itch, right? Because your body's histamine system starts to act up. Oh, there's a problem somewhere in your skin or something. So, but I don't know. It's just like whenever I see something like this, like get creeped out. And because I don't know if I was serious or something, like I said, I haven't seen a doctor or something. But sometimes, you know, when I think about that, like that thought doesn't go away, right? For a long time, a day or two. And then I'm like, oh, fucking hell. Get off their blood. And with backward facing spines and a powerful bite, it's nearly impossible to shake it off before it completes its liquid transaction. The horror comes from the legend of Kandiru being attracted to the chemicals in urine and swimming up the urethra of unlucky humans and getting stuck up there. A fate that takes surgery to reverse. Imagine a serrated... I remember uh, yeah, Grand 2 episode where like Clarkson was saying that to Hammond. Like don't, which was, was it African video? I think it was like African uh, special, right? Where they go all over the way, Amazon, Amazon uh, jungle and shit. Was that there? Was it? I don't know if it was Amazon or African one. I think it was the Amazon one, you know, South America or something, right? Where they go all the way there. Oh, I remember saying like, you know, if you V here, like it will, which is insane, right? You would not think that. But yeah, there are fish, basically salmon and things which, which like swim up river, right? Like up upstream. So yeah, when you weed, it can like upstream into it. Like, oh my God, the thought of it is just panicking me. I don't get the people who go hiking and go into jungles. I would not do that. She and toothpick in your bathing suit business and you'll see why the violation with gills is so feared. But how much of this is even real? Most of the reports of people getting penetrated by peenfish are really sus at best. Apparently, they're not even attracted to the ammonia in human urine in the first place. There's a good chance that the can do controversy came from European settlers coming home from long expeditions and telling these long, exaggerated stories to anyone who'd listen for status and attention. Yeah, but basically they were probably lying for clout. You have to remember, the whole piranha skinning a cow thing spawned from locals staging an event to impress the president. The truth is, your chances of peeing in the Amazon and getting frontal probed by a fish are about as much as you getting meal prepped by a shark or getting struck by lightning. Oh my bad. And getting struck by lightning. That being said, I'd rather get tag teamed by the pets of Poseidon and the forces of Zeus than have a blood luster up my urethra, no Franklin. If the odds ain't zero, they're just too high for me. But I'll happily take a Kandiru to the Manduru, then run into aquatic op number four. In fact, I'm so afraid of it, I actually had to break my own rule for this video. The Humboldt squid obviously isn't a fish, but it's the closest thing to a living nightmare on this list. Let's be clear, at five feet, about 100 pounds, there are bigger squid. What sets Humboldts apart is they can hunt in packs of over a thousand. Yeah, that, that's three zeros like a Tony oh Snell stat line. God. Nicknamed Diablo Rojo, there are old fisherman tales of men falling overboard, getting swarmed, and never coming back up. 
There's also stories of them curiously approaching. This is literally a uh, Cthulhu level shit. What is it? What's the name of that uh, whole mythology? Uh, Cthulhu, Cthulhu, Cthulhu. Ar uh, Lovecraft, right? Lovecraftian mythology, tentacles and shit. This is literally the nightmare of that. Imagine that thousands of these squids attacking you with their tentacles and shit. Oh, that is insanity, right? And squids can be really deadly. Look at the like underground, underwater war that goes between like uh, what is it, uh, shark, uh, shark and like a big uh, giant squid or like whatever mega squid, whatever it's called, right? And you see these scratch marks on the shark. Is it shark? Is it whale? I don't know. But scratch marks like some kind of a great battle went on there. Imagine that level should be with a thousand of them. Divers before flipping and trying to rip their masks off. But who needs stories when marine biologist Alex Kerstich can tell you about the time several homicidal squids grabbed him and attempted to drag him down into the dark maw of the abyss. It gets worse when you realize what exactly happens when a red devil decides to take you to hell. Humboldts aren't just highly intelligent, they're covered in tiny red chromatophores that they can use to rapidly change color in order to communicate with each other. It's like Morse code but for Crip and Calamari. We don't know exactly what it means, but there's a good chance if a Humboldt confronts you and starts violently flashing red, it could be telling a bunch of others you can't see that you're free eats. So likely the last thing you'll see is pulsing red before you get eaten alive. It doesn't help that satanic cephalopods are known for speed eating and are notorious for stripping fish to the bones faster than fishermen can reel them. Add a beak that can easily slice flesh and a bite force that can reportedly crack bone. And I think you see why I'm not exaggerating when I say I'll deal with every other fish on this list than a pack of predatory color coordinating squid. And I don't care what logic says, there's no doubt in my mind this squid would eat a human if they thought they could. Why? Humboldt squid only live about a year. That rapid... See? thing with the humans is like if they run out of food they will come after humans it's like that tiger thing right what is it, lion or tiger i don't know where basically a lion was was like injured and start to hunt like a human i'm pretty sure it was tiger right so it was injured and start to hunt humans because they were easier prey like right humans are so weird we are the most dominant species there is but at the same time physically we are the one of the weakest one it's like okay not one of the, let's just say the weakest one, at least the modern one. Basically, honestly, in living a luxury and leisure, right? Uh, people who go into like just Starbucks and shit. Oh my God, what is this? Oh, I got like a, a you know, a mosquito bit me. I'm going to die. Let's be honest. We are the weakest physically, right? So, if, you know, yeah, they would easily attack us if they think it's going to be fine type of way. And it, it's, you know, if you like, would you rather get attacked by great white shark or would you get attacked by a thousand squid? It's like, the answer doesn't matter because both are going to be fucked up. Yeah, one is more fucked up than the other. Let's, I think it's like 1,000 squid is more worse. Both are deadly enough. It's like beyond 100%. Does that even matter if it's 100% or 1,000%? 100 is enough. Anything more than it is that overkill, overkill I guess. But growth in a short time means they'll rarely pass up an easy meal, even if it's their own kind. Humboldts are highly cannibalistic, and they will not hesitate to turn on a weak or injured member of their own hunting party. There was a study done off the coast of Chile that found that out of over 2,000 squid, more than half held the remains of their own kind in their stomachs. It sounds to me that anything they see as weaker than them is something they can feed off, and the only saving grace for us is they usually only press things smaller than they are. But you don't even have to be seen as food for affiliated squids to be a problem. Like a true xenophobic, they react to most things they don't understand with aggression, and they've even attacked cameras and equipment and left them out of order. But to me, the most disturbing aspect of getting assaulted by squids is, even if you escape, if you panic and surface too fast, you can get the bends and past tense anyway. That type of psychological horror is what puts the Humboldt here, and wouldn't you know, emotional damage is another symptom of finding out about the next fish. Cause now we got the stonefish. Not one of, but the most venomous fish known to man. It's what? armed with verruco toxin, and symptoms of getting stung include crippling pain, shock, tissue death, and even paralysis. And speaking of pain, you can be in- Oh, anything that like attacks your nervous system, you're just like fucked, right? Uh, one type of sting like whole, your, your whole body will feel like it's burning or something, right? When it attacks that, right? Just the thought of it is panicking me. In agony for over 12 hours, and it's enough of an eternal jihad to cause hallucinations. Anecdotally, there have been tourists who've stepped on a stonefish only to beg their doctors to chop off the whole foot. 
Then there's the added threat of, if you don't get out of the water quick enough, it won't even be the venom. You can get paralyzed and catch a stage fatality to drowning. Even if you survive, you can still suffer permanent nerve damage and severe muscle atrophy. But that all wouldn't even be that bad if the stonefish wasn't nature's manifestation of a dick move. The most venomous animals on the planet usually dress with bright colors to warn the rest of the population that they're packing. Stonefish decided to do exactly- Yeah, I, you know, I'll notice that immediately as I've watched a few videos. Like anything that is bright, like the green toad, anything that's bright color, just stay away from it. It's just like, it's just fit here, right? If I go anywhere now, wilderness or anywhere, I might forget everything, but this is the one fact I'm not gonna forget. If something's bright, oh, isn't that cute? No, it's not. Just stay away. It will fuck you up none of that and instead cosplays as a stone only to mortally punish you for its camouflage working like i said it's like having invisibility but also serving a death penalty every time someone steps on your foot then you gotta add the fact that there are another fish that can survive 24 hours out of the water and they have a literal switchblade growing out of their forehead yeah i knew there were a problem ever since one nearly permanent nigel thornberry a stone cloaking toxic minefield of misery, but with stonefish anti-venom being the second most administered in Australia, today if you get stung, your chances of surviving are actually pretty good. Not like the next fish, cause for this one, there is no antidote. The stonefish might be the most venomous fish, but the puffer fish is arguably the most poisonous thing alive. Quick rule of thumb on the difference, if it bites you and you die, it's venomous. If you bite it and you become a was, it's poisonous. And few things are more poisonous than puffer tetrodotoxin, which is 1200 times more of a death sentence than cyanide. Tetrodotoxin interferes with signals between nerves and muscles, causing muscle paralysis and a total shutdown. And of course, the fugu blowfish is considered a delicacy, but if the chef misses a single cut even by a little, you're instantly on the clock. You won't know that happened until your face goes numb and your lips and tongue get this weird prickling feeling. <laughs> then, you'd suddenly get a splitting headache and dizziness to go with vomiting and diarrhea as your body desperately tries to purge. Okay, who is this ISO speed? Right? Why is he acting so weird all the time? I've seen clips of him like being really weird. I've seen him in Durable E now, right? I'm pretty sure he's the, uh, with like one of the Paul brothers started the prime drink or some shit, right? Like, was he Twitch stream or, stream or something? But of all the famous people, he's like really weird. Like, it's not like, oh, he's weird. He, he, he acts weird deliberately, right? It's like one of these days you might gonna do something that's gonna be just enough to... Already people are gonna be pissed off you, at you because I guess that's how world is. Anybody becomes famous from Twitch and shit, some of people are pissed off at them. Like all the Paul brothers, this and this, right? And now if you're gonna be like, if you say something just right, just enough of wrong, you're basically screwed the poison but it's already too late and you'd start getting paralyzed starting with the hands and feet but slowly spreading out and by this point you likely can't even call for help finally it'd get harder and harder to breathe until you notice the room slowly fade to black leading to either a coma seizure or just death the permanent kind Tetrodotoxin essentially flips a kill switch in your body, and there is no antidote. The only treatment is hooking you up to a respirator to breathe for you and praying it passes. The poison puffball is such a problem, it makes you forget they also have teeth that can bite clean through your finger. In fact, it's more than enough to violate a scorpion. And I don't even know how to describe what they do to crabs. Turning crustacean into crustacean with a smile, no less, is criminal. There's nothing funny about getting caught in that bite, with reports of pufferfish mutilating the genitals of men, and one case in 2008 where a Cambodian child had his... Men? How did they get to that point anyway? I, I, I smell something funny, right? Why just that? Uh, coin purse sliced in half by a puffer fish. And unlike the Kandiru, this ain't a myth. Have your privates out by a puffer and you might just get... <laughs> so that's six of the Sinister Seven, but before we get to the last one, we got honorable mentions. The fact that there's a fish that weaponized electricity enough to decommission a caiman and we just accept that is kind of crazy. And the thing is, it might not even be the voltage, but it's getting knocked out in shallow water that'll get you. Swordfish are one of the fastest things in the sea. They also have a built-in melee weapon equipped capable of inflicting life-altering harm. In 2015, a Hawaiian man was fatally struck in the chest while trying to catch one. Another man in Malaysia bled to death after a swordfish yeeted itself out of the water and also RNG'd him in the chest. Swordfish are also on record shanking sharks and even bleeding out sea turtles. The sheep's head fish. R really only because of that mouth. Shipophobics be damned. The titan trigger fish is a highly- Yeah, okay. 
the, the sword fist thing is just like say it's saber basically saber flying and just like stabbing you that's just terrifying shit right and the more terrifying thing is you know those people like with the, like small like robots right two people robots and this kind of fish is like to like fly out of the like water what if you're rowing one day that somebody flies out and like stabs you in the face or the chest okay now i'm never gonna be on robot after this uh, after this thought i'm just never gonna be that Highly aggressive honey badger with gills, capable of dishing out severe injuries with the same teeth they use for crunching coral, sea urchins, and even a crown of thorns starfish. The trigger might as well be named after their temper, and this foot and a half vibe check is a big reason why beginner divers never go back in the water. Speaking of big, the Goliath grouper. At 8 feet up to 800 pounds, the fish the size of a small car feels more like a leftover Jurassic prop. Lucky for us, most divers describe it as a gentle giant with the temperament of a St. Bernard. Although a St. Bernard didn't allegedly swallow an entire kid in the Florida Keys. Allegedly. But since we're on the subject, the last fish on this list are catfish. And yeah, that's kind of cheating. There's over 3,000 species of catfish, even including the genital jihad, the Kandiru. Catfish are like the trash compactors of the fish family, which isn't a problem until you see just how big they can really get. And once a catfish gets big enough, there aren't a lot of things alive they won't try to eat. We've seen armadillos, turtles, and even unaware seagulls get fored by a catfish. There's a species in France that figured out how to stalk and hunt bathing city pigeons. Yeah, I don't understand the naming system sometimes. Like, first of all, scientific names make sense because it's based on scientific evidence, like which family tree that belongs to makes sense. But the simple naming, why is so many species of catfish? Like, change the name then, like give separate names so it's easier, right? This happens a lot, like, there's lots of vegetable that is from India or something. The English name, basically English people give them like this G O U R D. I don't know how to pronounce it. Gourd, ivy gourd, bitter gourd. It's like they're really different, right? From taste and everything. Bitter gourd is literally like one of the bitter bitter uh, vegetables out there. It's really healthy for you, but sim something like that. But everything is gourd. I'm like, come on, man. There's a long. Uh, what is it called? Like uh, the long. It's also some kind of a gourd. Everything's gourd. Like. Uh, when I realized that, like, wait a minute, like, this is really hard to understand. Same thing people are trying to do, right? Pluto is a planet. This is a different example. But Pluto is a planet. Ceres is not a dwarf uh, planet, like an asteroid, but it's also a planet. So we're going to have, what, 50 planets here now? Like, uh, okay, Jupiter is a planet. So is Ceres, which is, like, uh, I think smaller than our moon. No, not smaller than our moon. Close to our moon, right? Pluto, which is smaller than our moon, is same as like Jupiter. Like, what you do? What? What's the point of naming after that? Another learned to wait by cave entrances to suck up any exhausted bats that fall in. There was even a catfish nicknamed Kuno the Killer who terrorized a German lake and somehow caught and ate someone's dog. Basically, they're all the shit I've talked about pelicans being just in fish form. The question is, if a catfish has ever eaten a live human, and it isn't even if they would, but if they could. The Wells catfish can grow to 10 feet long and cap out at 300 pounds. The Macomb catfish can also get to 10 feet, and the heaviest one ever recorded was pushing- Oh, that would, that would definitely eat a human. Look at that shit. 650 pounds. If there's a catfish that could stomach a human, it should be one of these, but there's a slightly smaller catfish that was believed to be a legit man-eater. In the late 90s and early 2000s, a series of fatal attacks on people in the Gully River had people convinced there was something in the water hunting humans. In these attacks, victims were suddenly pulled underwater in front of people, only for their bodies to never be recovered. In 2007, Atal Kumar was swimming with friends when he was violently dragged underwater, and while he was never seen again, friends caught a glimpse of something. Something that- Is that India? Come on, man. That's what I need now. That they could only describe as an elongated pig. Crocs and bull sharks were considered, but the prime suspect ended up being the Goonch. At about over 6 feet, 200 pounds, the Goonch is usually smaller than the whales in the Mekong. But it's feared that the practice of burning funeral pyres by the river led to the equal opportunist developing a taste for human flesh. And while it's a stretch to say a corpse happy catfish could swallow an adult, it becomes a little less believable with children. There's no solid proof of a catfish catching a person, but they for sure can off one. The biggest ones can easily overpower you, if not just knock you out and drown you. Not to mention a majority are venomous, with those spines putting both experienced fishermen and oblivious bystanders in the hospital. They also have a nasty sandpaper-like bite that can easily draw blood. But what really makes them a living horror movie 
is their intelligence. The ones packing up pigeons, they weren't always doing that, but they pretty much ate everything else around them and were forced to adjust. So it's anyone's guess what could happen if they gain a taste for humans. And with catfish being swimming tongues with over 175,000 taste buds across their bodies, yeah, I doubt acquiring taste takes long. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you drink water, hug your mother, try not to get catfished out here. If you'd like to see me swim with slightly less freaky fish, the full GoPro footage of me in Hawaii will be uploaded to my Patreon. And with that last second self promo out the way, I'ma see y'all. Okay. You know when, uh, when in like uh, one of those dating websites when you put like fake photo there, what is it called? I catfished your ass, right? Uh, there was a joke there. So okay, that's what it's called, catfishing. Is that right? I'm, mis I'm mistaking that. I don't know. What does that have to do with this? I don't know. But yeah, catfish, like so many species. But yeah, that's terrifying. Every time I see this type of fishes, but like weird like features, right? Like small teeth, sandpaper style things that can really fuck you up. Ocean is so terrifying, right? I'm guessing the first catastrophic video that went famous on YouTube was the ocean one, right? Like uh i would throw a cactus uh, before i go swimming or something i'm pretty sure that was some type of title i remember watching that and like then i realized how terrifying the ocean is and a great white shark right they have like you know like spare teeth there if they need it like which kind of animal has that like that's some insane level of shit like all the things you hear from like anything like you know those deep ocean things normal ocean things all these fishes and shit is just terrifying venom poison we will talk about Africa server, this server, but what about ocean server, right? Atlantic, Pacific, what about that server? That is the most terrifying scenarios of all time. But then again, we are like not a water creature, so we're going to be more terrified of water, but who knows? So when you see those Cthulhu level like mythology and shit, you realize like well, you can understand where that came from, right? Like people are going to be legitimately terrified of water and of course they're going to make up things like that. But yeah. All right, well, if you like, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.